Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Right. Uh, it's good of you all to come, and I hope you're going to enjoy this picture of the little boy, and I hope the prickly fruit when we get around to it, uh, assuming all goes swimmingly for these, these few lessons that are left. Now, there are a number of things about this uh, enterprise that you need to take on board. Number one, I want you to try to do better than I did last time and do a really good working sketch of this. Now remember, it's not a sketch to make a pretty picture. It's a sketch to help you make a pretty picture. So you need to take note of how various things are in relation to each other. Um, I would begin in monochrome uh, to begin with. And then if you feel the need to add color, and I did when I did my sketch, then um, by all means do so. I used watercolor pencils, but uh, any means of coloring, if that's what you want to do, would be good. Now, about the picture, what I have done is exclude these black rays entirely. Um, I was going to leave them in and take the chain out. And then I noticed that this little hand is practically holding this chain. This little hand is very difficult to understand how to do, even from a sketch. So if you lift the chain a little bit, you can actually be holding onto the chain and make that bit all that much easier. And don't forget to put that curve on it. It all adds to where he's looking at. And the next thing to note is the angle of his head. The face is up here, not here. So the face is um, north, northwest, looking northwest. So he's got his head tilted right back. The top of his head is here. Uh, I'm calling it he, it could easily be a she. One doesn't know, it just looks like a little boy to me for some reason. Right, um, the next thing to remember is that you're dealing with a toddler. So the head goes into the length of the body, including the head, four and a half times. Not the eight that we're used to when we're doing adults. Presumably your skull doesn't go as fast as the rest of the body or difficulty. Um, so that, that's something else to do. And the other thing to do when you're doing your sketch is take note of the angle of the stripes on his pants uh, because they are going to help to shape the, uh, the figure. You'll find when you do the sketch, he looks quite slim. And it's only when you start to put these stripes and the shading in that he that you can actually see the, see the nappy under the pants, which is what we're interested in. So this is what I've done. There's my sketch. As you can see, it's altogether more detailed than the sketch I did of Stromness. Uh, because I, know, I have a better idea now of what I need to know. Uh, I resorted eventually to watercolor pencils. But the thing to remember when we come to do it is form before decoration. So if you can get this very strong shadow in here, miraculously, his little pants become full of nappy much more easily. And the same with the light and shade on the head is um, much more to the point. So here's the chain. Uh, he's got his little red boots against the, uh, the curb here. And then we've got this acre of grass going up above him. And the thing to, to concern us initially is how to make that grass um, look convincing rather than just as a green background. And of course, you all know the answer to that. You make the distant grass much lighter than the grass near to. That way around, with a bit of luck, it should lie down 
and especially if you put good detail on the little fella um, and quite strong colour, he will stand up uh, forward, which is what, what we want. Ah, uh, is that all? Right. Um, it took me about an hour and a half to do the sketch uh, because I wanted to get in far more detail that would be useful to me um, for making the, the final picture in pastel. Having, so it's worthwhile taking the time. This is, um, um, you know, taking the time so, so to save yourself time when you come to do the, uh, the picture finally. Now, I'm not sure how clearly you can see the drawing that I put on. I used a light pencil. Um, this is uh, Valua, but uh, any pastel paper will do, obviously. And looking at this drawing, he really looks quite slim about the hips. Um, so, again, uh, announcing that the stripes on his pants are going to make a lot of difference. Um, don't straighten things out. This um, little ruched up piece around here has got all kinds of ends and sides and twiddles because it's on elastic and has produced quite a nice little shape there. Um, and then he's got one leg, trouser leg higher than the other, which also helps. This little foot is up on the curb. This one is flat on the ground. Uh, all these things make a difference to the overall picture. Right, now one of the advantages of um, pastel is that you get the different shades in a stick. It does make life a bit easier. So I'm starting up here with quite a light, a light colour. Now, I'm not going to um, put it on too heavy at the moment. If you work too heavily in pastel to begin with, um, what happens is that the paper gets, the tooth of the paper gets full and it just won't accept any more. You might want to change things. I think I've got these in order. chain there. I don't have to worry about that. I can put the chain in afterwards. I don't want to lose my drawing. There's a boy. It took me long enough to do it. I'm more conscious. Right. One, one of the things doing this will do, of course, is, is to isolate the little boy for you. So when you look, oh, it's not doing it very brilliantly. You can say when you look, you'll see. Quite a lot of difference. a bit sudden. So, um, that so gives you the basic idea. Uh, obviously, I can't leave it like that. I've got to go back to it. I do some work here, so it's not quite so sudden.
Pastel does blend quite easily, so um, even though I'm not actually blending it with my fingers, uh, it is blending on the paper because I'm working one colour into the other as I'm going along. Right, now when I, I start to work down here in more detail, of course, I, I'll actually show little bits of grass and whatever, but that's just the basic colouring, more or less where I want it to be. Right, let's start on the child first. Hmm. Well, he's quite a golden haired little boy. And the gold is over here. Now I'm actually using the um, the direction of the strokes now to um, look at his little fringe. It's quite high up here, this little fringe which comes along here. And I think that's too far. And we do very sort of bitten line there. And this side of his head is actually quite dark. I'm not um, too concerned about the, um, the right colour at the moment. More concerned to get the tonal value of what I'm trying to do. Right. And of course, because I've done a sketch, um, I, I've analyzed and looked at this quite a lot. So I've got a good idea of what it is I'm trying to reproduce here. Trouble with pastels is you haven't got the right colors to do it. But you can mix them, you can mix and match, it's surprising how, how much you can, in fact, mix and match. That bright yellow, there's far too bright. I thought I'd fix quite a pale one, but manifestly not pale enough. See if that's more, much better. And of course, um, there's no reason why he can't. There's quite a lot of light on top of his head. Incidentally, there are no strong shadows. So although this picture was taken in Italy, we haven't got strong sunlight. We've just got um, the normal cloudy skylight that we're more used to in this country. And catching his in front of his face. Ooh. Nice. Mm. 
Mm. I'm going to turn that into a pink. And then we have to go for a dark color. Or the side of his face. Um, where's that light color got to? Where is this? It's coming along, according to my sketch, it's coming along here. And then we go with a quite a dark color. I'll try this. Because this side of his face is in shadow. It's a bit frightening, that, isn't it? However, we'll go with it for the time being. I can always work on top of it with, with the light colour, which will, uh, A, blend the two together. Now work on top of that with the light colour. And go back and try this one. Go back on top of this one. Quite a strong shadow underneath his little chin, let's see. I'll put that in. And then uh, take it out again. Now his hair down here is getting quite tangled, so um, it all adds to the thing. I'm still not happy with those colours. Well, and then just here, and this you really need to get right is the angle of his ear. It's far too big, but it's there. That's where it is. It's quite a strong show behind it. Again. And in here. Oops, what happened there? That was a bit previous. Right, now let's have a look at this here. It's um, largely white. Again, the light is falling on the top, so it's falling on his shoulder here. So we can, we can put in his shirt. And he's got a little color here showing. We made blue and white, but 
we can add that later. And again, lower here. And his shirt coming down here. Now, if we think in terms of the shadows, we've got some light shadow on this arm here. Shading down into there. And we've got a light shadow here. And even that little collar is light. So nice big curly shadow there, which is actually a bit darker. And then we've got these stripes coming down the side is right, a bit more light, I think. That's going to take a little bit of fixing when I get there. No, it's quite, quite a dark shadow where the, um, the braces go over. And it's not a straight shadow because it's not lying flat against his, um, his back, it's a little bit raised. It's quite raised there. Look at that there. It's quite a strong shadow there. Shadows on this shadowy bit. We do it for time. Haven't told me yet that we are running short. A little bit of shadow running across here, light shadow. I go back to the darker shadow. This one is quite dark. Yeah. A little dark shadow there. There's all kinds of shadows running along here. Let's see what we can do about his arm now. Quite a lot of. I'm going to put that chain in his hand. I don't need to worry too much about that. And that's a bit strong. Let's calm it down a bit by working on top. 
There is a streak of light trapped in the top of his arm there. But, um, we'll come to that when we read his light. Is that the light? Yes, that I'll do. And then we need to look at the other arm here. It's bent in front of him. Ten minutes, minutes. ma'am. Right. Um, the light is catching him there. Right. No. Um, I've used this, uh, I've made the stripes in this plants a lot darker. And I think it helps the picture if you do. So I need to find, I want it to be different from the grass, definitely different. Otherwise it just fades into a background. So if I use that for the basic color of his pants, You know, I'm just showing where they are, as far as that's concerned, and the stripe. I think that's going to help. Right. So. I need to go into that much darker green or is that this version? Now, let me see what I can find. It's a bit. Okay. Not sure I'm gonna like that. I think that's a little bit too might take that out again. However, if we look at his waistband. There's a sort of almost a dotted line across that there where it changes from being um, in the elastic and where it is. I think that's a bit fierce, actually. I think I'll take that. Beauty of passing, you can cover it up. I take most of the pastel off. Go back with my lighter color. Thank you. 
yeah, I have to find something not quite so dramatic for the dog because I want to. Um, Right, so if we come down here. Five minutes. Right, so we're beginning to get some sort of form in it now. And it's almost done. Um, <coughs> I'm not attempting to put the stripes in yet, I'm just uh, here anyway. I thought I needed the stripes up there, but I was rushing it. And I shouldn't have done that. So, you know, learn with me, have patience when you're doing yours and see how you can get on from there. Right, and of course the, the chain goes across, so I take it through his hand and it goes up in a curve like that. Up this bit. So he's got something to, to hold on to. Two minutes. Right. Well, I'll leave it there. Um, these colours and strokes I put on at the moment are more indications, more feeling my way, um, so that I've got an idea of where the colour ought to be. Uh, I think I need to lighten the green at the back here much more than I've done to really push it back and down uh, when I when I come to do it. Uh, but I think that's that's made fairly good progress. The important thing in all this is to do a really good working sketch to work from. Not only will it help you understand what you're trying to do when you come to do it as a pastel. It will also um, give you something to work from other than the photograph, so that what you're putting in is actually less detail, which is more informative.